um, board members and, and, and the rest of you folks. <laughs> um, the, general the general public. We'd like to thank you all for coming this afternoon. Uh, <laughs> what, we, uh, what we have um, thought we're going to do is we will finish just doing the policy reviews. We'll then uh, close the workshop, open, uh, reconvene the special meeting, deal with the letter, and then what we're going to do is we're going to boot the board procedures to the first available meeting in March, assuming that that's going to work with everybody's schedule. So basically we'll be done then for, the, for today. We're going to, number G on the workshop, we're going to uh, delay that. So, uh, if you and so yeah, if you that's the intention. And what we thought we might do is maybe meet at a mostly this is for our, our the board members because we're going to meet upstairs. Um, I'm thinking maybe between 11 and noon or something we could meet, and at that time we could do a working lunch or something up there, and then uh, we'll go into expulsion because it sounds like. We probably will have an expulsion that day. Yeah, I'm tentatively do, um, looking to do that at like 11 or 12 on the 10th if that's all. No, no, I was trying to not have us come in, you know, because uh, we're going to be in all day. We'll be, have to be here by 4, so yeah. Yeah, tentatively, if we could mark that as 11, is that, Doug, does that work with your schedule? Okay. To be determined. To be determined. And this really is more of affecting us and Sam. Um, you know, we love you all, but. <laughs> but this is for this is more housekeeping stuff for us that we're going to do with that upstairs again. I just think it's a better better place for us to meet to just kind of talk to each other. Okay, with that we're going to um, do policy reviews and Mr. Dixon. Yes. Good afternoon. We have four today. Uh, we have Policy 2.22 School Board Meetings. The language adds Section 4 regarding public speakers and it adds two citations. This is just a public uh, meeting. Chuck, turn your mic on, please. Yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you. Sorry, this is a public meeting statute. And this language is just being inserted to state that someone can come to the podium and address the board at a public meeting regarding of any. Proposition before the board speaker shall adhere to the rules established by the board in accordance with Florida statutes. Really, that's a segue into the next policy, two point two two one, which is your particular public participation at the school board meetings. So, should we? Well, yeah, I take them together. Or do you want to just? Well, I, let's take them separately right now. Okay. Right. I mean, really, what? Uh, I mean, not for not. The, what, what the statute has said is that, you know, if you have rules or a policy, and a policy is the same thing as a rule, um, that establishes your public participation for being able to speak at a meeting, and you follow that, then you're kind of immune from any type of allegation that you did not allow, you know, that you violated the open meeting laws and didn't let the public have their input at a proper time. So what 2.22 did said, they added, Section six, which said we're going to establish a rule uh, that's going to allow, that's going to delineate how the public is going to have their opportunity to speak. So, I drafted 2.221, which is basically the, the meat and potatoes on how you're going to allow the public to speak. Um, I mean, we can. To me, 2.22 just says we're going to look at 2.221. Yeah, and 2.22, just board members, is what we'll also um, be talking about revising potentially as a result of uh, our uh, board procedures. And that, so that really is a, that may be the only thing I would say to the so staff. So potentially revise this if you're next meeting? Right, and that, this on hold? that's what I was just going to say. The only thing is, is, is that we can certainly let, give any direction on this language needed for this part of it, but because what I'm, uh, the two points that I'm talking to maybe have us address that we've talked about on board procedure to add to this is one parliamentary procedure because we don't even have it as part of our board policy and so that was one of the things and then also um, how something gets on the agenda 
and that's something that it would fall under this as well. So I think, um, with the exception of of uh, number well, you're gonna six, another, you're going to have another workshop, right? I mean, you got to still go through this. You have to bring it, you know, for advertising, you know, for approval, approved to advertise, then you wait your 28 days and have a, you know, you, before it can go into effect anyhow. And you can move forward with 2.221 without moving forward with 2.22 if you want. Correct. And that was what I'm, I'm, my intention was for have us to move forward on that. 2.22, we just probably need to delay until we have our workshop. So if there's any new language we want to add into it then. Um, we just need to provide some any input on, in this case, number six is what you're talking about, suggesting the new la uh, the language to be, correct? Correct. Can we move on to 2.221? Yes. Okay. Unless, there's, unless board members have anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one, as Mr. Bradshaw stated, is he wrote this one, so I mean, I'll just turn it over to him and he can. Yeah, what I did is with, it, like I said before, the way that when the statute came out, I started to talk, the new statute came out and talked about, you know, if you have a rule or a policy that allows, you know, the, the public to participate in a meeting and be able to talk to, you know, items that are on the agenda and have their input prior to you you know, reaching a decision on what you want to do, and you set forth how you're going to do that, then, you know, you're deemed to have complied with the statute, you know, once, once you do that. So I basically tried to take what we normally do and, and just codify it or, or place it in the policy. And so I can I can kind of run through it. I, I hope that y'all had an opportunity to, to make sure, to, to read it if you have any questions. Um, the first paragraph just says, you know, basically, we understand it's important. The second paragraph says, at the commencement of regular and special meetings, we're going to allow public comment on any agenda item, um, and that can be, you know, for matters uh, on the regular agenda or on the uh, um, consent agenda if they need to, uh, and also says that the board shall allow for public comment on matters not contained on the board agenda at a time certain as contained on the agenda, which is what we already do. You know, we have our, at the very beginning of the meeting, public input, and at the end of the meeting, public input. This does cover special meetings also, because it doesn't, the statute doesn't delineate between, you know, a regular meeting and a special meeting. So since a special meeting is the same as a regular meeting, um, they need to have, you know, an opportunity to come and address you on whatever they want to at the end of the special meeting also. So that's Well, it does. It does not spill. It does not state that because you don't have to have public input in a workshop because right. you're not voting on anything. Right. You know, the, the the purpose of the statute was to make sure that you have input. You know, prior to you taking a vote, a workshop is more of an opportunity for you to be able to discuss your ideas amongst yourself and receive input from from district staff and to have conversations and the sharing of of those um, those facts and ideas and to have, get some consensus on some directions that you that you may want so to look at. Voting. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, so number one. Um, our agenda items, uh, A is the procedure for speaking at a meeting uh, and the green card. So it's, you know, af at meetings after the adoption of the agenda, members of the audience are permitted to speak on one or more items, including consent or non-consent agenda items prior to board discussion. Except, and I put in here, except items pertaining to employee and student discipline, because if, you, if you're moving forward with an employee termination, um, you know, you, you, you're not, you should not get that input prior to, because you're going to sit as the governing body. And in student discipline, you're not, we're not going to talk about anyhow. I can't stop someone from coming up here if they want to come up here and gripe about, you know, some type of student discipline thing. But y'all been in here long enough to know that I warned them that now they are opening up this up to uh, uh, public comment, or, or they're opening it up and taking it out of their confidentiality. Um, and then I gave, kind of gave a little thing on how you do it. So you get a green card, it's delivered to the left. You know, it's really kind of basic step by step by step on, on what to do. I mean, I don't, you know, 
I don't need to read this to you. I mean, if anybody has really any questions or, or does not like a portion of it, um, you know, some of the things that I highlighted in here, uh, you know, board will not act on any other matter raised by a speaker prior to the next regular meeting. So, you know, somebody can't come up here and say, I demand y'all vote on whether or not this happens. You know, you're not, you're not going to do that. And also, it's generally not your practice to respond. Um, except to correct inaccuracies uh, so that you know, kind of prevents the getting into an argument with someone. Um, and then basically you have your open public comments. The same thing applies to public hearings and your regulation of disruptive speech on what, on what you can do. We have the, uh, the item that we read here. Does that need to be part of that, or is that just a, just a good practice that we need to just continue to do? Uh, well, I think it's a good practice, and it's kind of addressed. Um, you know, the chairperson of each board meeting before which public comment is permitted shall administer the rules of okay. the board for its conduct. Uh, but I think the, I think this kind of covers, mm -hmm. you know, what's in there. Um, it's not a bad idea to read that if you're going to have a lot of public comment because sometimes we get people that's when we get use 10 or 15 it. green cards it's good to read it you know see that's kind of a warning on how to regulate that when you have one person there it makes it a little bit easier most of the time we, you know if we get a couple of people coming to the podium to speak it's a <coughs> big deal any comments questions changes Doug, you okay with so far? Okay. okay. Uh, I just asked and then let everybody put it on for advertising. Uh, yeah. so for approval, meeting. approved advertise at the next meeting, then if no one has so any can, can I make a motion? No, we don't need to. We're, we're just workshop. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. It's just, it's just, we're workshop. Just, 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 so just, no, we do it all the time. No, we do it all the time. We'll just put it on the agenda on the 7th or the 10th, 310, to approve for advertising. Yes, ma'am. So the, moving on to the next item, this is uh, one that was uh, asked to be brought forward. I think you got a presentation before the break regarding the uh, the uh, measles outbreak, and this is kind of a follow-up to that policy 5.09 requirements for original entry. Uh, we did Pam did identify some language that needs to be updated in the policy 5.09 and I'll pass that out to you. So the one that's on the agenda doesn't have the no it doesn't have the revised language. This basically doesn't change the policy, it just updates the language to reflect the Department of Health as opposed to the Department of Children and Family Services. And so by number one, I think we need to put an A there to present a certification. I guess you mm -hmm. could put present certification. That's no, okay that way. It's okay. Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay. Who came up with this title? I know it's not our staff. I think it's just it's just an odd title for what it is. I'm not sure about that. But no, it's okay. It's I'll go through the language here that's been revised. Policy uh, 5.09, Section 1A, students who are under 22 years of age instead of 21 and or are attending adult education classes. And in Section 1B. I would only suggest that you do the same as you did with 21 and put the parentheses, put 22 in there. In parentheses after it. Okay. Yeah, it's a 21 print. It spelled out. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's typical the way you do it to make sure that people. It sounds silly, but it prevents people from not misinterpreting. I'm assuming the reason for the 22 is to accommodate your exceptional students that you have to provide educational service to. Them. Did anybody have any other uh, comments on 5.09? Okay. 
And then the final policy before you is policy 9.40. This is a, a new policy uh, to address advertising. Advertisers permitted to advertise as recommended by Mr. Bradshaw. We did take this to the policy and forms committee, but it kind of got a little bit convoluted. So that basically Mr. Bradshaw has restructured it and I'm sure you'll have some discussion about this, but I'll, Mr. Bradshaw, if you want to. I mean, it's some time ago uh, we were having issues with people in advertising and also it's also going to cover uh, political views and distribution of flyers and different things like that on our campuses. But, uh, you know, it'd be, you know, years ago it started off with people wanting to advertise on the school buses, on the radios, and then it's kind of worked into uh, once we have district web pages, you know, you're always getting bombarded. We want to advertise on your web page, you know, or, you know, I want to advertise in the yearbook or a flyer. Or I want to distribute something to students, which this does. It's specifically we have another policy that covers that. Or I want to buy a banner, put a banner up on the baseball field or on the football field. Or, you know, all these people, they they want to donate money and receive some business benefit back from it, which is understandable. Um, but without some type of regulation in place, then you're subjecting yourself to whether you have a, an open forum or a limited forum on, how, on what, it, what you are and are not going to permit. And so when I drafted this, I drafted a while ago and I tried to encompass most of what I could think of mm -hmm. on what, what the issues that we would face in advertising. I will tell you that I was speaking to Kenny this morning, and I know like at Lacanto High School, they've had someone approach them saying, hey, we want to sell Lacanto High School an app for your phone now, so that, you know, I guess you could install this app on your phone, and I'm not quite sure what the app allows you to, to do. It, it allows you to know when sporting events are going to be in other school functions, but then it has advertising pop up on it. Right, and, to, and you know, with, with this policy here, you know, it is going to be be either, you know, something tangible that you can hold in your hands that's going to be on a school campus or governing or on a school district website or the or a, or a school's website which are under our control. Um, I'm not quite sure how to handle an outside app because th this limits what you can put on a web page, you know, and it can't have where you know you click on the phone number and it directs you to an alternate web page and I think Dr. Geddes can help me with that. If we find out that you know we can immediately yank that down off of our web page. I Correct. do have concerns about an app um, and how we would monitor you know something that we don't have the ability to yank down immediately. It's something that I can investigate because I can tell you now that you know on my phone I have a pile of apps and I think that's part of the Way, you know, young people receive things nowadays is, is through is, is through um, you know, applications. But um, you know, the basic it it, it, um, it talks about what type of advertising that we will that we will allow. Um, you know, it talks about where we're going to allow advertising. It specifically states it does not intend to create a public forum, so we're going to limit this down to some very specific things. Um, tells talks about you know in school sponsored publications, on school buildings and school property, on our district internet and websites, uh, prohibited venues uh, where we're not going to allow it, um, restrictions, and on what we will. Um, you know, advertisement shall not express political, religious, or other personal viewpoints. Must comply with all the requirements of this policy. These these things are going to have to get approved in advance, prior to um, you know being allowed, which it generally is, you know, by the EP principal or their designee or their superintendent. Um, you know, it has some very strict um, prohibitions on what. You cannot have in there, which is in, on page three, D one through. Let's see, I have to grab two pages there. One through twelve, um, and and it has an approval process. It establishes a committee by the 
superintendent to approve these. Um, and I, 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 I put that in there so that you get consistency from one school to the next. Um, the section of the Florida statute on 112.3143, uh, because it's going to be a committee, is, a, is that's the uh, voting conflict. So you know, I can't sit on the advertising committee and approve my own law firm's, you know, advertising, you know, or my brother's law firm or something like that. So it's kind of the same restrictions that you have to follow while you're here, you know, being uh, nearing to the game, your personal gain or that of a relative. And, you know, unless anybody else has a question about it, uh, I know that y'all read it. So yeah, I've got a question. Oh, good. No, I'm just saying, uh, in other words, we're revisiting that, allowing on our school website advertising. Yes, ma'am. Now, you can sit there and say we don't want advertising on our on school websites and I can take it back out. I just kind of drafted, well, that's why we have the workshop. I think part of it has been is that they've been doing it and we've had no policy. Well, who's advertising? You're talking about the school, not the district. The on the district, school. District, district. Different schools. Like schools will have one and like if I go to Citrus High School, I don't know if they still do, but they had where you could get a shirt or you could buy something. You could buy it. Was it they use it as fundraisers? Mm -hmm. And I so they're. So speaking on our website, our district. Website. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I don't think we have anything on ours, no, banners or anything like that. No, I'm sorry. It's ours. Oh, this, this does talk about that, the, and the Citrus County School Board website shall be permitted in accordance with the terms. So, I mean, if you're. It's if you choose. But that's a choice. It doesn't mean we're mandated to, correct? You, you can access the school websites through our website, so they're connected that way. Right. Mm -hmm. I just like any advertising on our district website. And, and I don't disagree. I think that's a good, I think that's that's an appropriate practice, especially if we don't have to do it. But I think the idea is if we, for some reason, wanted to do it, and you'd probably vote against it, so we don't be, <laughs> but I mean, the idea is that we have a policy that would actually govern it. Yeah, I had a question. Yeah, go right ahead. And, and I, 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 I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Dodd. I will go back and read that to make sure that it's at your choice and it's not something that is absolute where I'm going to get forced yeah. to have to do that. It says the school board will also permit commercial. Yeah, I will I will go back and, and, and Yeah, maybe it should be a permit. And, and readdress that Instead issue of will. And to make sure that when okay. that, it, yeah. depending on how many things that you want to change, that may be something you can address at a meeting to see if it's okay to go forward with advertising. I think, though, Ms. Powers is right. It may, it may be that we want may instead of will. Mr. Dodd. Okay. Yes. I just want to make sure there's no confusion in regards to, like, athletic programs. I know there's a lot of churches that will purchase an ad uh, supporting their youth uh, that play in the football team or whatever the athletic event may be. Now, that's not going to be any violation, is it? As long, well, it does indicate not promoting. I don't think so as long as it's not. What's the example again? I'm sorry. Uh, a church uh, buying an ad in a program, like, um, like that supporting says, Citrus football. ABC or ABC Church, per, you know, supports you know Citrus football. Or or I, or I don't think that's a, a, a problem. I do think it's a problem if ABC Church says, you know, we support Citrus football, and then you go farther and you know start espousing religious doctrine or something along those lines. Then, then that. What if they were to put the worship? Uh, times for church or whatever on there. Probably not. No problem? Is that what you're saying? Well, that's why they would have to go through the advertising committee to, to make sure. So we would have to get some and, flexibility. Probably. And if the Unitarians or the Wiccans want to, to advertise, they then have a right as well. Sure. Right. But if not they have, but. But if they, yeah, so I just want to make sure that, you know, at that point, um, you know, in one advertisements, um, you know, you talk about local civic or community organizations, and then in two venues, uh, you you put in their religious and or other personal political religious or other personal viewpoints. So I was a little confused there. I just want to make sure we're not going to uh, prevent. Um, to where are you? I want to make sure I'm okay. Not sure. Uh, well, if you look on on page okay. one, yeah, on uh, advertisements. Um, it obviously B2. talks about, yeah, B, I mean, this is to encourage a positive relationship between school and the community, 
and then B2 <coughs> statements of support, which a lot of these, what I'm thinking of, are, are those statements of support um, for students, or for Central County School students and programs and advertisements purchased by local civic or community organizations. Um, so then we go down to two venues for these advertisements. You get into A, it says these venues are a forum for debate, advocacy, or expression of political, religious, or other personal viewpoints. Yeah. So, like I said, I know there's a lot of... Yeah, I don't think that it's a problem to put in there that we support, you know, the same, but it's not a place to, to for lack of a better term, preach your style of religion. You know, to you know, for support, and I think that goes back up. You know, congratulatory, supportive statements for students and their advertising. You know, those types of things are would be fine, but it's not. It's not the venue to. I don't. I don't not quite know how to word. Well, if you're if you're advocating. If you're advocating, I mean that. I mean, I guess if you put your the time of worship, then you're advocating say, coming to worship. Worship times, like right. Yeah, I will look at that just to make sure. I can see where that would be. I think it would be probably under advocating. If I put John three sixteen, that would probably be. I'll, I'll check in on worship times. With the name of I mean, they've, in the past, there have been churches taking ads out inviting kids to youth group activities yeah. on Wednesday night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a variety of different things. Yeah. Well, in the past, we have a lot of policy. No, I know. I'm just saying those are the kind of things that I'm just trying to give examples of what that might be talking about. I understand. I'll, I'll, I will look at that, and maybe we can bring this back for another mm -hmm. workshop then, to get our, because that sounds like I'm going to have some more conversation that I'm going to need to that I'm going to need to go through, or maybe I can just. Call, yeah. You know, Mr. yeah, I don't have a problem too. Though, if you if you if, if there's some dialogue you can do, and if you just when we bring it back for to set the time um, to set the uh, the um, public hearing. Thank you. That we can we can if there's a change, we still have time to ch make that change at that time um, when we go to set the yeah. hearing. And just another to piggyback there with our email distribution. I know Mr. Dixon is kind of the gatekeeper for what goes out with, and as far as information that's distributed to our staff. And it could be something from um, a concert at the Rock Crusher Canyon, all the way to something as far as Whispering Pines events. So is there, and I know that he has been very good at critiquing those things before a mass mailing goes out. I see, I see our emailing list as having an advertising value. So. Is there something that we can do in here as far as partnerships with non-political entities can? Well, it's not the well that's intranet. not actually that's advertising. The, yeah, that's the intranet that only goes out yes. to, to our staff. To staff. But that's a nice it's like a place. community bulletin board. Yeah, there is, though, there was a reference in the, this policy having to do with the email. That's and that addressed it. That has a value. Our, our and it said, though, it, um, advertising value. you had it in here. It said something about it may not be used. Well, it says our 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 phone, automated phone system won't be used, and we won't email students. Yeah, we won't email students, but our internet. I mean, we get. I, I remember getting the concert information from about Rock Crusher King. Generally speaking, the the things that get distributed are like special events and things that are uh, community. Yeah, exactly events and if they're offering a discount to Citrus County School Board staff, that kind of thing. It's got electronic mail uh, sent from electronic mail addresses provided by uh, Citrus County Schools shall not be used for advertising. That's what it says in this policy. I, I would, I think that the problem is, is that there is some conflicting, I think if we, if we didn't have that. You may not do that anymore. You have to understand right. that the school district is the largest employer right. and it contains the largest yeah. captive audience in this in the county in regards to your employees and your students. Okay, so anytime that outside or outside community can get access, easy access in, it's to their benefit if they're trying to advertise something or to promote something. 
And so you can go to an open forum where you can allow everybody to come in and send anything they want in, or you can limit it, you know, for the protection of, of your students and, and your employees. But you can't, sometimes you cannot have it both ways. So what I was asked to do was try to draft a policy that allowed, you know, and it was more along the lines of, of fundraising and to make money, you know, mm -hmm. to, to supplement budgets and different things and like that. Too, so, you know, you, you can't have it where you can do whatever you want and then have restrictions on certain things. And so this is for, you know, protection of the students and it's also for protection of staff, which is why it has the prohibitions that are contained. Well, and if we, it, again, try to fill in the budget gaps with creative avenues. If we if we have the technology where we can have a tab or something so that we can sell advertising that can be attached or dropped in a certain tab on the website so those people that do peruse our website can go to uh, for staff discounts and then they can pull up the JC Penney's 50% off hmm. blah blah blah. Yeah. But that has a value. We need to I've, sell that. I was going to say, but that, that would need to be managed, and you know, there's a, especially, where, where, where would you draw well, the line and, on that? And I, well, I agree, I, but we're already well, having information like that filtered through our staff, and we're not, we're not charging anybody anything. I wouldn't, I'd be careful about keeping the two separate, because, you know, yeah. it says you will not, I mean, those aren't advertisements if you're if you're just making people aware of there's a 50 percent yeah you know, that there's a, an event in Inverness or downtown Inverness or you know that um, and I wouldn't charge for that because then if you charge for that kind of stuff then you have to like Mr. Bradshaw said then you have to allow everything yeah. you know there everybody loves it while everybody's happy until someone says until you know the nudie bar out of Tampa wants to advertise on your web page or put up a banner at the football game and you tell them no but you have the local bar with their stuff up mm -hmm. there and you don't have a policy in place that says you know we're not creating this open forum we're, we're keeping this closed and only under these strict guidelines and you end up in a First Amendment lawsuit you know fighting for your life over stuff that's why you do this so that you can regulate it. And when you regulate something, you know, it's kind of like giving a yes or no answer. You're going to make half the people happy, you're going to make half the people, you know, sad. So, what do you think about um, if a private school said they wanted to advertise? In under this, there would be, I'm not sure, anything that would prohibit oh, yeah, us from having to, to <laughs> yeah, they would have to accept the advertising because it, it's of an educational nature. It's, it may or may not be of a political nature. It may not be even of, depending on how the ad's written, of a spiritual nature. So, yeah. So I mean, I I, I see that I, I'm I struggle because I'm I'm with Miss Balfour that I, I I'm looking for revenue streams that we don't have and can we tap into them, but. Uh, but I, I know in the past it's a little bit of Pandora's box for us. Well, that's the same thing that we did with the um, distribution of literature to students, which is nine point. Which this paragraph, by the way, actually ties into that. It tells well, that th this doesn't account for that because when Dave Stevens was the director of risk management, he came in here with three or four three ring binders that was this thick and he. It's like about this time of the year said so this is what we've already been asked to distribute to the students it is taking up a, a pile of time they throw it on the floor you know they don't want to look at it it never makes it home our teachers have to distribute all that and the board at that time went to a, a closed forum where unless it had an educational purpose it's not to be distributed to students so, I mean, and because at that point in time, anybody could bring anything in and, and hand anything they wanted out. And yes, it made a lot of people mad because, you know, Joe's Taekwondo wasn't allowed to distribute a thousand flyers into, you know, the middle school and primary schools at that point in time. But, you know, you also understand that you have this captive audience mm -hmm. that, you know, that's, that's very easy to print out a thousand flyers and have them distributed if we have an open form. So that's why we did that. But we don't really have anything as far as advertising is concerned. I'll do whatever y'all want me to do. 
but we don't have a, a policy in effect that governs, okay, what's going to be able to go on the sign at that citrus, I mean, they're playing baseball now, or, you know, somebody wants to buy a banner and they want to put a banner up, we have no control really of what goes on that sign versus what goes on a sign at Crystal River or what goes on a sign at, at La Canto, besides good common sense and, and the graciousness of the community, you know, but um, that's why you know, we're trying to... Is there, is there anything, uh, that goes along, I think, this line, is there anything in this, and I, I don't think I've seen it, but maybe I'm missing, that would immediately prohibit any of the common practices we've been doing. And in particular, I'm thinking of, you know, sports, a lot of our sports is offset by advertising costs and programs, and, programs, and not just sports, but, you know, band and things. Yeah. I don't, I didn't see anything, but I just want to make sure that we don't all of a sudden are, written, you know. I think the issue Doug brought up that Wes is going to look into is just. Okay. And that, I think, is that may be modifiable or, or, or workable. Well, well and when, on, on page five it says, any advertisement at a school site at a school activity or in a school publication shall be approved by the principal designate. So it does get that you know, basic local, you know, home school. Right, but the principal is going to reference the policy, I would, I would certainly. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So it's going to be subject to the, it's going to be subject to the policy. I mean, right. you know, the things that are contained in, in Section 3, which are absolute prohibitions, you know, uh, 3D, you know, you can't promote unlawful or illegal goods. You can't put up a, a sign that says, you know, buy weed at, you know, somewhere. You know, you can't, you know, you don't want something that's, um, well, on, on 11, you do say just broadly religious religious issues, so I, I would, to me, um, a, a church isn't a religious issue, but, you know, you also put in their candidates, so I guess if somebody owned a business and they became a candidate for a public <laughs> office, um, that's when their ad would come down. I, I think it's different if they're still doing it in there. If I, I think there's a difference between me putting a sign up that says Bradshaw and Mountjoy serving Citrus County since 1950, you know, West Bradshaw running for state representative. What we had this year was we had a candidate for school board show up on a school campus and start putting flyers up at people's windshield. Right. We and we had that, nothing to stop. We that. thought it was against policy, but it is if you're an employee. It's not, a, and he wasn't an employee, so there was nothing we could do. And there's so, a different, and that, we don't I also think see a difference in saying, you know, ABC Baptist Church supports, you know, Citrus, the Citrus County right. School District versus ABC Church promotes abortion or right to life or whatever, you know, and, you know, whatever right. that is. You know, okay. that's, that's more of an issue that you're trying to promote rather than. A, you know, because it goes back at the very beginning of, of the policy, talks about what you can advertise for, um, you know, permit commercial and charitable advertisement to place paid that express the advertised public support of the schools, of the district schools, students, and programs. Um, all advertising, regardless of the platform or of the advertisement, is restricted to such a matter. And then additionally, it says congratulatory and supportive statements for students and advertisements purchased by their parents, family, and friends, and statements of support for, for the school, school students and programs and advertisements purchased by local civic or community organizations. So I mean, it kind of limits it down to that. Um, so a church, we're saying, is a community organization, basically. I mean, they are, I mean, it is. Until I think, it, yeah, I think until they're trying to promote a, right, okay. a, a particular thing. view. As long as we, we'll never get confused on that issue, as long as there's an understanding of that, you know, um, and it still might be good, though, I, I Wes, to look at. I, I will go back and double check. Okay. okay. All right, I appreciate it. And, and I, I would, want to make sure the point I mean, that, I understand. that Thomas made that we don't want. Uh, the, the school of the voodoo doll or something advertising. Well, I think that's the problem is I think that if you that in reality if you allow First Baptist Church as an example I think that you have to allow for First Islamic Group of, of America. Uh, sure. I mean I don't think we can we have that that right to distinguish the difference and, I, and Mr. Dot I know that's not what no. you're suggesting. No that's not what I'm um, uh, But I just want to make sure our board understands right. I, I do think that, you know, when I looked at this, it, it talked about paid advertising, and this kind of goes back with 
um, what Mr. Mullen mentioned, there are sometimes people would put out, you know, just flyers. Like, you know, what if a business wanted to come into the school and put out flyers? I mean, it really doesn't say in here. Well, 9.50, they can't put it out to students. But what about the parking lot at the high school? I think that's the question. We had that situation. How would we be able to program What about at a football game? It would have to be approved by the principal first and comply with the policy. With the policy, nine point. No, with this, with, with the put it on students first, or to put it. Well, let's just say they go in the parking lot and put flyers out. I mean, this—they're not paying; they just want to put. You know, they want to promote their they business. Still, they still have to, to comply with the policy, or we may pay them out. They should have it approved first, right? And then, if the principal will allow it, you know, then um, you know, if if. They were going to win the district championship, and the bunch of the kids wanted to put on after the, you know, after the game, run around and put stuff on the park. Said, "Hey, principal, can we put congratulations to our district champs under the windshield wipers?" That's something different than you know Joe's Pizza, buy one get one free. The the problem right, is, right. is we have no um, we have nothing. We have no recourse right. though. Person does something, and like for example, the the incident we had where a candidate blanketed parking lots. We really have no recourse though one way or the other. Well you have the recourse of taking it down because of the violation of our policy and, right. and, and not facing that you're being discriminatory in fact because you're not allowing me my first amendment right to be Got political it. and espouse my political okay. views. Because you can you could close down your campus um, as far as you know what type of forum that you want to want to have. And at that point, too, I would assume that you could deal with trespassing issues if the, if they were, the person was in the, in the thing where pre, prior to that, we wouldn't even have had that ability. Yes. Or we, it still yes. is in question. Well, yes, because the argument that would have been made or would be made was that, you know, I'm entitled to be there. I'm not prohibited from being there. I'm entitled to, you know, to voice my opinion on the product and my political views and what I think should do. And so you take all that away because basically it says you got to get it approved. It can't can't be espousing a political viewpoint. And you know, if you do it, then you, you know, I think you have the opportunity to say we are not an open forum campus and it's closed forum or, or very limited forum, and that's outside of our policy. You can do, you do it again. You know, we'll have to trust that. Now here's just the and I and I because I would not want this to happen. I think this may go along with what Mr. Dodd's concern is. We rent our schools to religious organizations. Yeah, it's, it, that's, it's, there's a, it says it does not, this policy doesn't, you know, take away from our facilities use stuff, so absolutely. Okay, so there would not be a problem if they now, on their rental on Sunday, they put out their Church right. of God, John 3.16. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, so it, We're not, it does not, okay. it does not prohibit that. Mike, I, I think we want to make sure that we protect Okay. So I need to look into the religious aspect to make sure that we're good there and make sure that we have the choice of the web pages um, as far as that, not a shall where we did change mm -hmm. up and having to do it. Was there anything else? Other than that, let's put it on and, and we can address those when it comes to us. If, if it turns out to be a bigger issue that I need to discuss, oh. then I'll pull it and ask okay. for it to be placed on a web page and I'll try to brief you all on we're bringing it back as another workshop, right? No, I think they're going to want to, want to bring it back to advertise. Only if no, we'll bring it back to advertise. Only we can work it out at that time. Only if it turns into a bigger, a, a bigger issue, issue and I have more questions that I need to answer. Yeah. Okay. All right. That concludes our policy issues. Thank you. Thank you. Um, board members, uh, we're going to go ahead and then, and, and if we're all done, we're going to adjourn the <laughs> workshop. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, reopen our special board meeting. And I thank you for uh, the input. Uh, you have a letter, a proposed letter in front of you with trying to incorporate those changes. If you'd like to take an extra minute to look at it.
and if there is, uh, if that is acceptable, then um, I don't think I need to actually take a vote on it. Do I not? I can just uh, we can just do it by consensus. No, take a vote on it. I mean, y'all are approving the letter. Okay. Over there, so. The only question I have, I noticed you know, we are focusing in on mentioning Chuck Dixon as our representative. Chuck Dixon is our representative because he is the director of planning well, and growth I, management. I realize that as far as his. Reaction. Because he was called out in their meeting. So that's why you're you're definitely adamant about putting him in there, not just having. Him Absolutely, I, I believe he decides that. Decides to move on for whatever. No, no. The reason for that had in this letter has to do with he was specifically called out in their meeting, and 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 board members. My feeling is is if there was an issue, and I don't necessarily believe Mr. Dixon, there was the issue that's been made. I think that that should have been something that a commissioner could have addressed to their administrator, their administrator could have talked to our superintendent. That would have been the chain of command. Mm -hmm. But to, in a public meeting, basically call yes, out yes. and address down that, yeah. I, I just feel that we need to send a message to them of how we feel about Mr. Dixon. So that was my, and, and Ms. Balfour, I, I don't disagree with what you're, you're thinking and concerns on that. So I, I, my feeling is that that's, I think we need to send them a message of how we feel about Mr. Dixon mm -hmm. representing. Yeah, I mean, we. Yeah, I don't. Th I want to think, make it clear. We, our staff, we value this. This board has had. Mm -hmm. I mean, today is a great example. We've been sitting there working together with our staff. Well, I'd like to know that we send the letter referencing the school board representation on the Indian Development Commission Board to the Board of County Commission. And, uh, and authorize the chairperson's Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers and a second by Ms. Balfour to approve, um, uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? The, yeah, uh, if approved, authorizing the, commission, uh, the chairperson to send the school board representative letter on the school board represent, representation on the Planning and Development Commission Board. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 4-0. Before I adjourn, the other thing I would just say, and, and it's not necessarily that we need to discuss it today, but I think that, that um, much of this and the issues that we've dealt with when it comes to concurrency and it comes to impact fees, we're going to need to address that in our interlocal agreement. I know you have it on your desk. It would be my uh, feeling that we need to be serious about the fact that th this, for example, is an issue that we see as part of that interlocal agreement. Right now, they're trying to strip all of that away from the school district. I'm concerned that we let that happen, that we don't let that happen. And I think that one of the places we need to focus on is that interlocal agreement. So uh, with that, I, I give that to you, Mr. Wesson. And, and again, if you have any questions, I know Mr. Bradshaw is always willing to sit down with each of you and, and, uh, and do that. We need to encourage doing that. With that, board members, thanks for hanging in there. Staff members, thank you very much. We are adjourned.